Oh, that's a scary word to some people. Yeah. You know, I can't eat that long. I gotta take my medicine. That, okay, so that's the, that's the excuse you want to use not to fast. Mm -hmm. What sort of excuse you gonna use for not reading your Bible? Well, okay. you know, we don't probably be reading our Bibles at work. We don't probably be praying at work. So you telling me that the Buddhists can get permission to play at work and lay coppers on the floor and you stand to your boss and tell them sometimes I need to pray so if you come to this office, you can't write me up because according to my doctrine and my belief, I got certain times of the day I pray. No, I'm not talking about religiously, but what I'm talking about is I have a certain time that I have set aside that I want to pray and I'm just at work doing it. Be bold and check it out. See, some of us, we, we, we quiet, yeah. we reserve, yeah. because we don't want to offend nobody. Oh, Jesus was an offense. Yes, the Bible said he was a stumbling block to many. And even after the fact that they experienced miracle after miracle after miracle, they sit there wiping fish from their mouth to show me another sign. <laughs> and they got, they got catfish on their lips. Come on, some like hot sauce. Come on, eat the bread. Come on. Give me another sign. How many signs you gonna see? How many signs you gonna see that God is with you? Come on, sense of God. People have been taken out of God by COVID, and you still sit up here talking about I need another sign. Amen. Amen. He's a rewarder. Listen to this. A lot of people when they get to that part of the scripture, he's a rewarder to them that seek him. That's not in retrospect to give me, give me, Lord, bless me, bless me. No. He's a reward to me and to people with him, with the forgiveness. He rewards us with forgiveness and righteousness. He gives us the ability, the wisdom, the ability to, to walk and live righteously before the Lord. He ain't just some Santa Claus you just rub on around Christmas town to my Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me. When are you going to bless God? Doubts and unbelief. Doubts and unbelief are like interfaces that causes network failure, mobile devices disrupting our communication. Doubt is like a disruptor in the community. You ever had a call drop on you that was good? And you had to make the call back again and you really couldn't get to the meat of the, 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 the conversation. You were just getting hot out of the conversation. It's almost like hot fish coming out of the crease. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's hot fish and you don't want to eat it and you allow the fish to get cold. Just in that little moment, in that little segment, the fish that got cold and it don't even taste the same. And then you try to re-drop it to revitalize the fish and it still don't taste the same. And that's how doubt comes in. It creeps in. It eats away at you. When things don't turn out the way you think it is, here come doubt like a little canker worm. Here come doubt like a little virus. Here come doubt and unbelief. It starts eating away at you because you've been praying for something a long time and it has materialized here. So now you stand like, like, like John, the Baptist of prison, chapter 11. Is it he should come or should we look for another? A life of faith. Yeah. Doubt interferes. Oh, don't think doubt talk. Don't talk to you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, sister. Yes, sir. Doubt will talk to you. My wife will tell you, I've been going through some things, amen, trying to uh, uh, advance myself in some areas, and, and it seems like every, every chance, every avenue I go down, it seems like no, 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 and no, and no. And do it feel good? No. Do I pray again? Yes. Do I read my Bible? Yes. And sometimes after I've done all I can, and guess what? And I still get another note on top of that. But yet and still, I rest assured, devil, that I'm steadfast. No way. He says this because you know that the testing of what your faith it produces something patience endurance the testing is the proof is the fruit of the job the testing of your faith if you really say you got faith oh you gonna be tested how you know that second Timothy three five the Bible says they that live godly listen to the scripture shall suffer persecution he say might he say maybe he say well let's revisit it he say shall. Yeah. So we're going to go through some things, yeah. many things, yeah. because of the fact of what we profess. Yeah. Come on, saints of God. And, and, and again, a lot of things that stun us is us. See, sometimes the biggest enemy is the one we look in the mirror.
enemy. Come on. Yes, That's the biggest enemy. And sometimes uh, you look at faith as, as a way as a, a, a positive expectations. Thank you. Surrounded Thank by God. negative forces. But now faith is the substance, the hypostasis in the Greek. The substance is the reality. So you have to really believe, saints. Yes, yes. When you believe, you can't nothing move. No. When you believe, you can't care who's sitting next to you. No. Why? Because I believe. Yeah. My daughter may act crazy, but I believe. Yeah. My sons may act like a lunatic. I did. I got out smarter than church, yeah. but I believe. They may try to make you more sophisticated, but I believe. Come on, somebody. Somebody may be trying to tell you five reasons why you don't need that no more. And all you need is just some yoga and breathe a few little bit and do this and do that, but no, I beg to differ. Why? Because I believe. Yes, but I know if I believe, it's going to be tested. Yes, sir. Come on, in a relationship, you ain't going to be tested. Yes, sir. Oh, come on, a work relationship. Yes, you, you, if you want to know if you really value, watch how they treat you. <laughs> See, they all about work ethic. Well, you should just work and no, 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 no. Because if anybody value, watch how they treat you. Yeah. If, if, if somebody look at you as promotional, you ain't got to come to them. They come to you. If somebody see you as a wife, you ain't got to say, please, 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 please. No, all you got to do is position yourself. Yeah. And the right person will come along. Now, if the wrong people keep coming along, then maybe it's time to do some self-adjustment. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you quit, quit. Well, I, I keep attracting all the wrong men. I wonder why. something that you don't want to deal with about you that you know you need to deal with. All right. Now all of us have some room or some way to something even married folk that we, something we got to deal with because sometimes we get beside us and we think we graduated. We think we done went to Mary University and we think we right all the time and everybody else is wrong. Yes, somebody. Yes, somebody. Not so. Yes. Sometimes you don't even want to apologize. That's right. Okay. You preach and you preach. Right. Sometimes you don't I sometimes you don't even want to apologize. You so wrong, you don't even want to apologize. And, and the evidence has been presented, and you know when the evidence is just mound up, you definitely don't want to apologize. But then you have to humble yourself. Yeah. It's the same time. You know, it was it, it, my bad, whatever, whatever you need to say, you need to say something. In reference to an apology. To make things right. That's why forgiveness is so important in the house of God. We ought not to have dissension and divisions amongst each other. We ought to be able to come to one another and talk to one another. We are Christians. We ain't part of some social club. We ain't get voted in. We Christians. And we got an issue with each other. We all said, Pastor Pat, I just need to talk to you for a few minutes. And if I'm busy, I'm asking, well, can we, can, we, can we talk at this time? Can we do it at this time? And then you, you ought not to walk away sad if, if, if it don't work at that time. I ought not to walk out that sad if it don't work at that time. Amen. Because time is very precious. You might have something really important that's going on. Even though what you may want to talk about is important too. Right. But at the same time, you have to respect time. Oh, come on, Sister yes. Bob. So therefore, the Bible says we shouldn't even have these things named among us. That's right. And one thing I learned to do is I did I blocked and dispelled any comfort, any information or conversations in reference to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Number one, I don't even entertain them. No, because you're not going to stand there and talk about my brother or sister in the Lord and just right. expect for me to no, agree no, with you. No, no, no. I don't care how much truth you may be baby saying, but if you're not talking in, in a way that we say, okay, this happened and this happened, but oh. let's pray, but let's do this, but let's go to him and talk to him and try to make the situation right, but if it's just a one-way street, I don't want to hear it. You shouldn't either. Amen. You shouldn't either. That's right. Because the Bible is giving us so many solutions. So don't act like somebody is just so damaged and so broken that we, we you, you just want to hate them. That's all you really want to yeah. do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Bible says hate is equivalent to murder. Yes, it is. So we don't we want to make sure we keep continuing the amount of spirit that we ought to continue in because you don't want to allow yourself to get into a place where you got a murderous spirit. Now you're right. not committing physical murder, yeah. but in your heart you're murdering your brothers and sisters because they don't align with your ideologies yeah. and what you believe personally. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the word of God. It's just your personal feelings. Yeah. That'll send you to hell, say so God. Yes, you gotta be careful with that. Yes, I'm ready to say, just give me a few more minutes. I got 1238, amen. A sincere love for God will seek to please him. A sincere love, a passionate love, a caring love. 
The Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord. He will give you the things to desire. Delight, that means to fall in love with Psalms 34. Says, delight thyself also in the Lord. He will give you the things to desire. So Silla will seek to please him at all times. The motive of his, her actions will be aimed to please the Lord. When we are driven to please the Lord, our motive and actually everything lines up to please God. It, it, it's just not just a part-time love that we do on, on the weekend and, and then as soon as uh, uh, so, uh, Saturday comes, early in the morning, we tiptoeing out of the, uh, the room and we wait for hope for nobody to see us. And it's ironic that it's always somebody <laughs> that even know you right. or know about you that see you. It's always somebody that sees you. But we ought to be to a place where we're aimed to please God on whatever yeah. level we can. Yeah. And sometimes pleasing God is detaching ourselves. Because the Bible says we shouldn't even share, uh, we shouldn't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. In other words, we shouldn't even endeavor in enterprises or in the spiritual or uh, religious uh, 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 things that they're doing to conduct to try to save a uh, friendship. Or to save faith, as some people would call it. No, I ain't breathing nothing. No, we ain't doing nothing. I'm not chanting no smoke. I'm not talking about shaman blah blah blah. No, we're not doing none of that. No, I'm not coming to the to, to the shrine. I'm not coming to this. I'm not understanding that time. It's only one God and it's many ways. No, I beg the differ while we holding hands. No, it ain't many gods. Baby. No, it's Jesus. I'm saying Jesus. Don't invite me. This is a lot of places Jesus didn't get invited. Jesus said it was some place he couldn't even perform miracles because of their unbelief. It wasn't power. His power was water down and restricted. It was their unbelief was so strong and thick to the point that he couldn't even perform miracles because of their unbelief. was just that thing. And you can't sit up here and sit with people that are worshiping other deities and tell them we're going to share a common enterprise Proverbs 35 says this, every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge. To take refuge in him, tested means try to be found without rubbish or error. Every word of God is found, is tested, is proven, is tried. Amen, somebody. It's infallible. It's without flaws. Well, I you know, when they transferred the Bible in English, um, I found several errors. But did you find an error about Jesus? Of course, in any translation, there's going to be a word or two because we're trying to take it from the original text to the English text that which we speak. So we're not dumb to that fact that there is some words or two that going to be in there, but it's enough in this scripture for you to believe the God of the Bible. Often in life, we experience new fears and fears. It is easy to lose hope and to falter in faith. We wonder if God has a plan for our life, and we begin to question if God is real and if he cares about us at all. Why? Because often we have experiences and new fears and fears. Yes, sir. Sometimes it's the new test. Yes, sir. Oh, you believe God for cancer. Now COVID then came on to see. Yeah. Your auntie done died of COVID. Your co-worker done died of COVID. Come on, somebody. Somebody in your family done died of COVID. Back-to-back -back COVID cases. Mask on, sanitizer, breathe down. You got two shots in your arm. They still die from COVID. Now that's a new fear. Now you're scared he ain't gonna go outside. Yeah. Yeah. You're scared he ain't breathe. You're scared he ain't shot. I don't go nowhere. I can do what I'm gonna do. Go. Some people have caught cold in the hospital. The place is supposed to be for healing, and, and, and a place is supposed to be for medicine. In the hospital for something else and caught COVID. And, come on, saints of God. They were touching nobody. They were probably 10 feet apart and got COVID. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. In the hospital. Yes, yes. One and not too long ago, they didn't even want you to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They had a whole number. See, and people didn't even catch that. They, didn't catch they had a number for you to call if you had COVID. Remember back in March and April when it was really hot and thick? I ain't talking about the new variant that's not, but I'm talking about at the time when it was real hot and thick between March, April, and May, and June. They had a phone number. Yes. 
I said, I told my wife, I said, man, I didn't know it was gonna come with that. Amen. You couldn't even go to the hospital. Yes, sir. For an illness. Yes, sir. They want you to call another. What's, what's, I thought 911 was the number. <laughs> what you mean, 47, 5, 7, 8, 16, 100, and pit pile, and, and wait for somebody to take your call? So you're telling me, <coughs> oh, gee, and you on the phone and you gotta wait? You gotta wait for somebody to come to the phone. So we experienced that. Before they start allowing people to come to the hospital, can you imagine if you can't breathe and you got symptoms of COVID, you've been tested positive, and they on the phone telling you don't come down here, the OIMC, go somewhere else, which way else to go? Can't go to jail. This is a medical problem. Saints of God. It is real. Yeah. I'm not just talking about the virus is real. All right. But what God is doing in the earth is real. All right. Amen. Look at Haiti, say some yeah. God. Yes, sir. Oh, what they were doing. I don't know what they were doing. I ain't been over there. I ain't seen what they were doing. All I know is God works through divine cataclysms. Yes. God's brain will his wrath through cataclysms. And this particular cataclysm with COVID, it ain't just hit Africa, it ain't just hit America, it ain't just